Hi guys, welcome back. This is uh, Matt Chat episode 469. 69, dudes. Featuring a look at the game Scald against the Black Priory Prologue. Now you might recall I interviewed a guy named Owl of Scald uh, not too long ago. He was talking about this project of his. It's basically a, a modern uh, game, but with those sensibilities, if you will, of the old school Ultimas, those top-down, you know, questrons, that sort of thing. Uh, maybe the early, some of those early 8-bit uh, uh, console games. Uh, but, you know, updating them with some modern interface and, of course, uh, a really good story and narrative. And uh, as we'll see in the video, kind of a darker uh, Lovecraftian theme going on there. So it might look bright and cheerful, but <laughs> as you get into it, it's got sort of this darker undercurrent. Uh, now, I don't normally do early access or demos or things of that sort. You know, I'll leave that uh, to other people. I usually like to wait until their official game is released and try that. Uh, but I just got so, so uh, damned excited about this one, I just had to jump in, play the demo, and I'm glad I did, because it's, it's a lot of fun in and of itself. Uh, and then, you know, it gives you a pretty good taste of uh, what's to come and see if it's something that's right for you or not. Uh, but I think you should go ahead and download it and have some fun with it, uh, regardless. Uh, anyway, we've got a lot to cover here, so without further ado, here is Scald Against the Black Priory, the prologue. All right, folks. <laughs> uh, what am I so excited about? It could be drugs, or it could be Scald Against the Black Priory. Now, this is a game I've had the developer Al on. We've talked about this. Uh, I talked about it with the Knox Archaist guys. It's it's a a project that's kind of a, a mix of retro and uh, new ideas. It's kind of one of those games that's trying to sort of evoke those feelings we got playing these games back in the, hell, what was it, just the, the 80s, uh, 1780s or something when we were playing the 8-bit Ultima games. Uh, but anyway, they're trying to go back. It's not, this project, it's not, uh, you know, designed to, to run on an Apple II computer. You know, that's not really the goal here. Uh, the goal is just to kind of take that essence of uh, those games back in the 80s, but just take the parts that were good, you know, and keep those, and update the rest so that it plays nice uh, on a modern computer. And I got a lot to say about that. Maybe we'll get into it a little bit later in the video. Uh, but anyway, you can watch that interview with uh, Al uh, if you want to learn more about the behind-the-scenes uh, story here. Uh, but really what I'm going to be doing in this video, we're going to be playing... Uh, uh, the prologue, let's see. So if you go to the Scald, this is on Steam. If you go to Scald Against the Black Priory uh, website, <laughs> it says early access game, and I don't think you can even, like, pre-order. Yeah, it says it's not yet available on Steam, which is a big bummer. You really want to play this thing. You, you know, you're dying to play, but, you know, you can, you can add to your wish list, you know. <laughs> you could wish for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, have fun with that. Here's the good news. If you scroll down a little bit, we've got the prologue here. And this, you can install, and we can play it, and we're going to play it, believe you me. Uh, so let's see how he describes this. Retro-style RPG set in a grim, dark fantasy world of tragic heroes, giant rats, violent deaths, and pulpy Lovecraftian horror. And I think I might have subconsciously added something to that description. I don't know. Uh, explore an engaging, branching story mixed with exploration and crunchy. What is this, Captain Crunch? This is breakfast cereal? Come on. Crunchy. Uh, <coughs> Maybe the rat bones are crunchy. <laughs> uh, anyway, can I make it through this line? Crunchy tactical turn-based combat. Ah, oh, yes that will engage RPG fans old and new. And I think I'm probably the old part of that continuum. We'll see. You know, some of you match chatters, I mean, some of you guys like, what, 70s, 80s? I, I'm kind of curious, like, who's the oldest fan of the show? You know, so if you think you're really old, uh, pipe into the comments, tell me how old you are. You know, I'd just like to get a sense of, uh, you know, who I'm talking to here. Uh, let's see if there's anything else here. I think that's about it. You just click install and you're good to go. So I'm going to click install, get this thing installed, and I'll see you on the other side. 
All right, well, let's get this show on the road. I had, uh, you know, it's not set up yet, folks, so I had to, do, <laughs> you know, mess around with my resolution and stuff. I won't be able to see my lovely face. I'm trying to record, so hopefully that will be okay. Uh, let's see if I can get her opened. I had to flip back occasionally to make sure it's still recording. See, the following is a beta demo. Oh, that was quick. Oh, oh, what's happening? <laughs> Scald against the Black Priory. There was some kind of disclaimer message there, but I'm afraid it just, like, soared right past me. Okay, flipping back just to make sure. Looks like I'm still recording, which is a good thing. Okay, create character, quick start, load, or quit. Let me take a look at the character creation. Probably want to go with a quick character. Let's see. Cleric! Classes, feats, and spells are not fully implemented and must be considered placeholders for the final game. In other words, beta, folks. <laughs> beta, 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 beta. <laughs> beta max. Uh, clerics offer close-range support to their party through area-based buffs and healing. Yeah, sounds like a cleric to me. Archetype cleric. Core attribute presence. Okay, that's a new one. I guess he's very punctual. Magos. Magos. Not to be confused with a mage. No, this is the Magos. Uh, classes, feats, and spells, blah, blah, blah. You know, I got a feeling like none of this is really going to be all that implemented, so maybe let's just go with the, uh, the quick character. This is a quick start. Just get right into this thing. On the dark... On the dark, raging seas of the Outer Isles, a lone caravel struggles against the winds and waves. Contine. <laughs> See, in such a hurry, you couldn't even put a U in there. <laughs> Let's contine. The moan of creaking timbers. The tang of preserved fish. Tang. Your eyes... You ever have tang? Uh, your eyes slowly adjust to the darkness of the dimly lit ship's hold. <laughs> I'll continue. As the you and it go. Wait, continue or skip intro? Uh, I think we can uh, watch the intro. Whoa! Suddenly, something strikes the hull, and the ship rocks violently. Your heart begins to pound, and a feeling of unease grows in your stomach. Let's see, then we have three options. Rise, well rested and ready to go. Get up, mouth dry and head pounding. Or rouse yourself from deep med uh, meditation. I guess this is like a way to determine what type of character you'll play. I think number two probably rings closest to home. Get up, mouth dry and head pounding, yes. You get to your feet and become aware of agitated voices shouting up on deck. Something is not right. Yes, first of all, I'm on a ship. <laughs> uh, you should make your way up top and get a bearing on this Divinity Original Sin 2 type situation. Right, be on your way. So it's day 1, 2-2, two, two, X-11, Y-18. I guess that's the coordinates. And this looks like my party screen over here. Andros. Abilities. Class, rogue, gender, male, level 1. Thanks speed to go, 1,000. Here's the stats we're dealing with. Strength, agility, fortitude, intellect, and presence. It's always fun to see how developers break these down. I don't know if he's uh, totally trying to do his own thing here, if this is like loosely based on some other system. You know, I guess everything has to be at least inspired by some of that, uh, some of the old war games or D&D. Uh, &D. Um, intellect, what is presence? The character's ability to read and react to the surrounding environment and people. So I guess <laughs> basic literacy with a little bit of charisma. Intellect, mental acuity, recall, and analytical skill. So I get no way, maybe uh, sounds like Presence is more like charisma, personality, intellect sounds fairly standard, fortitude, tough and resilient. So I guess that's, uh, 
my constitution. I think strength and agility probably about the same. You can see these skills. Oh, he's got a, I guess, quite a few skills here. Dodge, range, skill, initiative. Secondary stats. Attunement. What is this? Describes the characters. Don't forget that apostrophe, Al. What the hell, Al? Describes a character apostrophe, as magical energy and determines how many spells can be cast. Attunement refills partially with short rest or fully when the character rests in camp. So that sounds like it'd be good for a magic user. Let's see. A character's moral. Moral what? Morals? <laughs> Morality? <laughs> moral strength? <laughs> Losing resolve may cause the character to panic, flee, or desert. Oh, we don't want that. So this is basically whether you're a, a wimp or not. Uh, fullness. Yes, I'm quite full. Full of myself. Uh -oh. How well fed the character is. Oh, so there's... Oh, well, it's literal. <laughs> like, are you full? <laughs> a character with zero fullness will not be able to recover in camp. Okay, so we got food. Oh my god, it's like multiple pages of this. Okay, base combat stats, dodge, melee, ranged. Uh, let's see, so crit chance is its own thing, I guess. So is this just ability to hit? Yeah, so can you hit with a bow? Can you hit with a mace? Can the monsters hit you? Melee damage? Soak. Soak. Describes that the character has any innate resilience to physical damage. That's kind of interesting. This is added to armor soak for a total soak value. Let's give him a good soaking. Uh, movement. How many squares you can move. Total damage. Soak. <laughs> We're in love with the soak. <laughs> Encumbrance. Uh, looks like something's not right there. Encumbrance applies to die. Oh, Athel ticks. What are athletics? No, I'm just kidding. I know it's athletics. So look at this. We got skills. We've got derived stats, main stats. Looks like we've got enough room here for six characters. I mean, this is pretty uh, looking very promising to me. But of course, it's all going to come down to how well implemented this song is. What is this? Cha. Must be character. Feats. We got a backstab. Successful attack against a defenseless, stunned, or surprised opponent scores an automatic critical hit. Dot, dot, dot. What is that? Dot, dot, dot. So you just keep pressing that button for added ellipsis. Whoa, crap. I think I did something. Well, go back. <laughs> See, by feats. I need another foot. I only got two feet. Come on. Charger. What do you need to buy these things? character points. I don't have any of those yet, I guess. So you mean you got different... You think he programmed in all of this many feats for every one of those classes? i been a busy boy! Pierce armor. You make an attack at a negative four penalty, but with a chance to bypass opponent's armor, deal damage without applying opponent's soak. Any successful attack against the defenses. Okay. So nothing too shocking or unusual there. Well, let's figure out how to move a bench. Now, I think you can wire up a controller. I'll talk more about that here in a second once we get into combat. But let's just see if I can move with the WASD. Let's start with that. Yep, works fine. The ship smells of dried fish and salt seas. A pile of hay and an empty bottle of spirits. Can I get the bottle? I don't think I can get the bottle. Okay, so I can move with that. I can move with the arrow keys. Let's try just moving with the mouse. Yeah, okay, so if I hold the button down, it gets like a... I guess that doesn't really serve any purpose. It's kind of like pathfinding, I guess. It shows you the path. And then if I hold the right mouse button down... I can look around. Barrels. Crates. Let's see. Some games you can open up a crate. Some games you can't. I like a game where you could smash everything. 
I'm like a small kid with a hammer. Just want to break stuff. Now look, there's a chest there. Surely, now if I can't open this chest, it's so it's game over. I'm shutting this thing down. Let's see. Why is the eye green? Is a green eye? Okay. Sturdy wooden chest. Yes, I see that. Oh, okay. Something just happened. I guess you just click on it a couple times and then you can open it. Uh, a dagger is a fighting knife. Its blade is usually less than one foot long, usually. And can be curved or straight with one edge or two. <laughs> so that's just about anything, in other words, can be a dagger. Uh, one to two piercings are probably not the best weapon in the world, but hey, it's what we got. Let's just grab it. Looks like we got some armor here. Leather armor. Boiled to increase their natural toughness. Is that how that works? Tell that to the roast. <laughs> a small pile of reddish liquid. <laughs> Restores a small amount of light damage when consumed. Okay. Let's just get it all. Now I have to figure out how to equip stuff. Let's see this. I does not do it. Tab. Whoa, what the hell happened there? I don't, know what that, I don't know what that was. Uh, let's see, inventory. How do I open my inventory? Uh, space? Space bar. Well, that just brings me to that menu. Okay. Let's put the armor on. Put in cunt. What in the hell? Let's try clicking our character. Inventory. Okay. Use. There we go. So it looks like I can, I can use this shirt and the armor. What is this? A pile of gold? <laughs> Good thing to have. Okay, I think I'm fully equipped. Got armor, got a weapon. Ah, you can even see the weapon there. That's a good looking character, too. He's really happy. Okay, is there anything else here? It's too dark to make out anything. Oh, I can light a torch, though. Is there anything else hidden around there? I don't think so. Let's get out of here, folks. See, to your surprise, you realize that this door has been locked from the outside. It doesn't budge. Perhaps you could slip the lock with a thin blade. If you have not already done so, you must equip your dagger. Leave and press E. Oh, it's E <coughs> to manage your equipment. <coughs> e for equipment, I guess. Use dagger. Strength 20 plus. Try breaking down the door. Or leave. Well, I don't think we're going to get much done by leaving. Let's try to use the dagger. Ah! You slip the dagger through a gap in the door and lift the bar that was locking you in. The door begins to creak open. You gain 100 XP. Yes, I'm a genius! As the door swings open, you can now clearly make out cries from the deck above. You should make haste. You wait a short while. Okay. Well, I guess we just go on through. What do we have here? Hostiles have not spotted the party yet. Plus zero bonus to stealth. Press enter to launch combat. Pow! Battle erupts! Press return on your turn to auto resolve. I'm not gonna auto resolve combat, are you kidding me? Charge! <laughs> oh, 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 what have we got here? <laughs> Rabid rat. Not just regular rats, rabid. You know, rats do carry rabies. That's one of the millions of reasons you should kill them on sight. Preferably with an axe. I'll settle for a dagger. You know, I was, I was joking earlier, you know, I'd like to connect my controller. You know, I'm trying to figure out how do I actually connect that to a USB slot so I can... You know, I kind of want to just chop. You know, instead of just clicking a mouse. But, you know, we'll make do with this. Okay, Andrus is armed with dagger. Ah! Target is out of range. Move forward or equip a ranged weapon. Target is defenseless. Oh, you have no idea how defenseless this, this little guy is. 
Uh, attack, cast spell, use feet, next target, defend, inventory, combat, log, or dot dot dot. Let's see, I don't know if I can move, since I've only got three movements. Usually it's better to let them come to you and, you know, waste their turn. So let me just try that. Try to defend. Oh, they didn't move. Okay. So I have to move up to them. There he goes. Kind of reminds me of Pac-Man, those little pelts are showering down on. Okay, it's dark. So I guess that probably affects my hit chance. 58% chance to hit and do 1 to 5 damage. And let's see, I could, I guess, click this to attack. Let's try to use a feat. Pierce armor? Well, he doesn't have armor. Oh, let's get out of this. Just attack. Rats in the dark. Only scores a glancing hit. Oh, come on. I'm trying to hit him by sense of smell alone. Let's see. Maybe I could just click on him to attack. Let's try that. That works. Just as you would expect, another glancing blow. Ah, look at this little guy, man. Oh, come on, I need, I need to connect. Another rat. Oh, I'm surrounded by rats. <laughs> That's a dream come true. Let me just go down. So any of that works just fine to attack. I am just not doing much damage. Only one point at a time. Just teasing these things. It's like I'm trying to put them on a shish kebab. There's one down. Yeah, take that. Alright, he's out. As he should be. The other one there, he's just taunting me. He's, he's, he thinks I don't see him back there. Okay. He's out. Continue. Continue. Yes, continue. <laughs> Am I about to die? How many hit points do I have? I guess the green bar looks pretty good. Is that hit points? I hope so. You know, there's an interesting option there. Repeat last. So I guess that's if you're too lazy to click or move. <laughs> Just keep doing that. <laughs> okay. Hit that one. Solid four points of damage. And he's almost down. I think I can do it. Let's see. Ah, defeated your enemies. Each party member gained 142 XP. And there is loot on the ground. Really, what do these rats have on them? <laughs> Foam? <laughs> Rabid saliva? Loot all and leave. Review the log. Yeah, let's savor this a little bit. Yeah, review the log. Andros versus Rabbit Rat. Attack 14 versus Dodge 10 equals 58%. Attack 0 to 14 equals 10. Success. Critical hit. There's a critical hit even? Wow. Put that on a baseball card. Okay, loot all and leave. Picked up Rat Tail too. I have a new hairdo now. How do I equip my rat tail? Let's see, what was it? E, I think? E to equip the tail of a dead rat. Horan is overrun by rats. Horan must be the town, I guess, or world. Merchants will pay you to kill them. Reagent. Oh, it's this. I guess we use this in a spell. So I don't see. <laughs> I don't know what use would do. <laughs> You want to just see what it does for fun? Let's try it. You know, I'm allergic to rats. That's the sad part. Always makes my nose start to run. You know, I don't think it did anything. Try it again. Yeah, it's just making a cute little Nintendo-like sound. Okay, how do I exit out of this? Exit. So there we go. I think I've been playing this for five minutes. Already fighting rats. It just doesn't get much better than that, folks. Wait, what's this? The bloody bones of a small animal. You know, I've been watching a lot of these uh, survival shows. The one called Alone, and of course, Dual Survival. Bear Grylls, you know, there's a million of them. But the, uh, the one called Alone, man, they're eating a whole lot of mice on there. You know, I've never... You know, I'm ashamed to admit this. I'm ashamed to admit that in real life I've never chowed down on a mouse. 
Never cooked one. If you have, <laughs> I don't know if you want to admit. I don't know if I want to know. <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of a borderline crazy talk. Uh, okay. Do I need to do anything else here? I want to break this crate so bad I can't. I guess we can't eat those dead rats. Let's see. You emerge onto the ship's lower deck. As your eyes adjust to the darkness, you become aware of a hulking figure standing in the shadows. Andros, there you are, at last, growls a rough voice. Oh, it's a rough voice. Andros, there you are, at last. It's a little rougher, <laughs> growling. <laughs> Who's there? Show yourself. Freeze and listen carefully. Here, <laughs> Lunge at the figure. Come on. Uh, why don't we do the first one? Who's there? Show yourself. It's rolling. Where the tides have you been? <laughs> now, what were we doing down there? I don't know. Uh, why are you skulking around? Below decks, planning our landing. Why? Mind your... Oh, got a naughty word in here. Uh-oh. Mind your own business. What's going on? Now, let's do the... Let's do the second option, I guess. The island is in sight, but the damn Gilders refuse to land. They want to turn back. Gilders. Uh, if we turn, what is the Gilders? Is that like a union? <laughs> the union guys? <laughs> uh, if we turn back, we lose our shot at the girl. Who's the girl? What are we, what's going on here? I missed something. Did they say why? I don't know what the deal is with the girl, so I guess we'll go with number two. Only superstitious belge. They claim they saw something in the water. Either way, our boys are about to shove, are about to showing them some very real steel. Uh, if we can't land, we lose our shot at the girl. Oh, uh, I don't know. Okay. I knew I'd regret chartering a gilder ship. You'll regret not stopping our boys from murdering them if you'll get to the damn deck. All right, let's get to the damn deck then. Agreed, they deserve discipline, not death. <laughs> Listen, I've been doing this since you were at the, at the teat. Since you were at the teat. Let's just get on with it. I'm going to start using that expression more. I've been playing games like this since you guys were at the teat. Let's go. Some of us are still at the teat. Let's go for all the good it will do. Yes, get to the teats. I mean, I mean the, uh, uh, why am I thinking so much about teats? Let's get upstairs. Jeez. Let's go. Yes, go, go. Wait, there's a few sailors up ahead. Rattled as a pair of rabbits. Well, that's pretty rattled. Uh, we're not here to make friends, if that's what you're suggesting. Is there a way past them? There are two doors to take the left, and we should be able to sneak past them without any trouble. Anything else I should know, or famous last words? Famous last words. You and Roland begin making your way towards the commotion on deck. Press Q, or press the character portraits, portraits to swap the party leader. Okay. Swap the party leader. To press Q to do that, I think. Q. All right. I don't know what's going on with that. Roland is now leading the party. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, that's easy enough. I thought it meant like moving them around to these different slots. Well, what about this guy? Um, e. <clears throat> okay, so you can see what he has equipped. I'm not gonna mess with his equipment. <laughs> that sounded weird. <laughs> so I'm not going to mess with his equipment. Leave my equipment alone. Get your hands off my equipment. Okay. You said go to the door on the left, I think. I don't see any reason to disobey. Alright, so you can see here he's using that fog of fog of war or like the, I guess lighting effects so I guess I can stealth if I stay over here on the dark side Clever. 
need to go up here maybe? I see a chest. Turn the lights on. <laughs> Ooh. A mace. Yes, I want the mace. Perfect weapon to kill rats with. So let's see, the dagger I'm using. Sometimes a, a rogue gets a bonus if he uses that. I don't care though, let's just use the mace. <laughs> yes, the mace. You really want a mace. It's just perfect for rat slaying. Okay, so let's... Why is that guy following me? Got him down there. Do I? I think I can slip past him that way. <laughs> you will not defeat me, AI. Mutiny! Look at these, that's some really good artwork, too. I mean, check that out. Really good pixel art. Music's good, too. I mean, I am in the zone here, folks. You emerge onto the deck and see two groups of men facing each other with weapons drawn. The ship shakes violently in the grip of a storm as lightning tears across the sky. Amidst the din of the storm and the frantic arguments, you bellow for the attention of the assembled crewmen and mercenaries. Both the ship's captain and the leader of the mercenaries you hired, a the mercenaries you hired, a coarse thug of a man named Stavo turn their attention to you. Are these two different people? I'm confused. So anyway, they look, two people I guess, they look ready to use the unsheathed weapons in their hands at the slightest provocation. So the captain or the mercenary leader? I'll try the captain. You direct your attention to the ship's captain. You know him to be a reasonable but suggestible man. At present, is usually placid eyes are wild with panic or anger. I paid for your passage to the shore, did I not? Why have we not dropped anchor? You know, I think number one is probably more like something I would actually say. <laughs> I paid you for this, damn it! So hard to find good help these days. Uh, the captain lowers his weapon and speaks earnestly. The coast of Hydra is cursed. We had heard tales and assumed them grog-trenched rumors only. But there is something between us and the shore that will drag us all to a watery grave. What are you talking about? What have you seen? We must sell on to land and the girl. You know, maybe there's like one girl left on this planet. We're just trying to get to her. <laughs> Let's go with that. Uh, there's desperation in the captain's voice. We are seasoned sailors. We do not balk at shadows. You need to be alive to rescue this girl you speak of. We're out of time. Sail us in or argue the point with the stop. You speak sense. Perhaps it is better to turn around. Stavo, have at it. So what are they... I don't know. We, you must turn the ship around? I don't... That doesn't sound right. Let's go with number one. Estado turns his steely gaze from you to the captain. Let me spell this out for you, sea dog. We contracted to rescue the girl. But if you don't get us to the shore, we'll gut you for free. The mercenaries you hired all shift their weight in anticipation of making good on that promise. A little bit of tension here on the deck. Captain, he's right. Do what you were hired to do. <laughs> Estado convinced the man. Let's do number one. Something changes in the captain's expression. He stands tall. I will not hold in my ship and my men to certain doom. We shall not get any closer to the coast while I have command. Ah, so we got another option here with a, a roll, a check on it. Diplomacy versus 15. I believe you, but my contract with these men does not mention your survival. <laughs> So I guess we gotta get a must be rolling a d20. If we gotta get a 15 or above for that one to work, if I'm reading that right. Let's try it. Let's see. Success. So how did that work? Oh, it's an attribute, 11 versus target. 
So I guess we had some points to kind of skew things our way a little bit. Uh, a few of the ship's crew lower their weapons. The captain's eyes flip between you and Estavo's murderous grin. He sheathes his blade and speaks softly, his voice barely audible over the snapping sails. So be it. May the deep have mercy. You gain 100 XP. You pace the main deck as the coast of Hydra sails into clear view. You may have kept the crew alive, but they're still tense and skittish. The ship's captain catches your eye and nods in gratitude. Oh, some more great pixel art. Man, he's really nailing this, like the, the, the narrative here, the, the choices I'm getting, the artwork. It's all coming together. See, the terror of Hydra. This must be that Lovecraftian element he was talking about. There is a scream from the crow's nest. Momentarily, you understand why. Huge, monstrous tentacles have burst from the water around the ship. Yes, it's a bad day when you see tentacles on a ship. You hear the captain cry out in terror as one of them wraps around his leg and plucks him from the deck. Another reaching their full height, the tentacles curve inwards and smash into the ship. Some pierce straight through the deck. Others snap the mast like they were matchsticks. You stand frozen in place. This is not sounding too promising. Through a haze of splintered wood and panicked screams, you notice Roland. He throws himself out of the way of a tentacle, but begins to fall overboard as the ship lurches once more. Go to his aid or leave him to his fate. I think we'll go to his aid. You dash towards the ship's fractured rail, dodging holes in the deck and wounded men beseeching you for help. Help! Help! Tentacles! Roland hangs by one arm from the side of the ship. Try to grab him. You lunge for Roland's arm, but he loses his grip and your fingers close only around thin air. You missed him by an inch. Oh. He falls wordlessly downwards. Oh. Well, that's too bad. I kind of I kind of like Roland. <laughs> Bye, Roland. You watch as he is swallowed by the raging sea. The ship is listing fatally, and you see the great tentacles high above you, poised for the coup de grace. Abandoned ship. As you jump, you hear the terrible rending of wood given in to flesh. The terrible rending of wood giving in to flesh. The impact of the water wins you. The waves pummel you down. The currents beseech you to go deeper, ever deeper. <laughs> Peaceful blackness. <laughs> Did I just die? Well, this is the shortest game. I mean, this is a short game. Sink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Well, is that it? I guess this was just to, like he says, to test out the game mechanics a little bit. Yeah, that's a uh, pretty good pixel art there. Got the right number of fingers. Uh, tentacles, huh? Oh, well, let's see. I don't think that was quite the end. Somehow we are at a place called the Baron Estate. Go ahead and save it here. The Villa of Lord Cato Baron, two weeks earlier. Oh, there we go. The prologue. Now I get it. <laughs> oh, it's like a flashback or flash forward. He's getting fancy with his narrative structure. Of course he is. This is Owl Skull, folks. Doesn't do anything just straightforward. Uh, but I'm going to pause it here for a minute and go get some lunch. I don't know if you hear this, but I don't know if it's those rats or what, but I'm just like ravenous. Uh, I'm going to take a break, get some food, come back, and we'll pick it up. All right, folks, let's get back to it. And I am sad to say when I went to the cupboard to try to find something to eat that was... Nor a rat in there, nor a mouse, but I, I did manage to find this uh, <laughs> Banquet Mega Mill, which I'm 
fairly certain is mostly mostly rat. It's okay though. It's a uh, free range rats. Yeah, it says that right there on the package. All all organic, home style. Yes, it was very very home style. <laughs> Actually, uh, quite delicious. But let's get back into the game. Uh, is that possible? Yes. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> the villa of Lord Cato Baron. Two weeks earlier. Oh, where's my dude going there? Let's talk to a blue guy. An aging armored man in the livery of House Baron stands and scowls at you. Eyes like coal peer out from a craggy face, fringed top and bottom with wild white hair. <laughs> we all know somebody like this, don't we? Return his challenging stare or walk on by? Eh, stare him down. The older man crosses his massive arms, steps forward, and leans towards you. So, young cell soul, come looking for a scrap, have you? Though his voice is full of gravel. <laughs> Lean times here, Kitty Young. Uh, there's now a glint in his eyes. Uh oh. As though the old coals have begun to warm up. <laughs> what kind of game is this? <laughs> Kydian, you old fool. Stand aside, old man. Have business with you. Stand aside, old man. <laughs> there we go, the first one. A single bark of laughter emanates from the dense beard as he embraces you in a crushing bear hug. You know, one thing I like about these, the way he set up these options is each one's kind of interesting and you don't know quite what's going to happen. It's not quite what you would pick to be, to play it safe. <laughs> so they kind of thrust you into this uh, role-playing scenario. It's it's really well done, I think. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Kideon, may older and grayer, I'm missing something there, I think. May be, probably be, may be older and grayer, but from the force of his hug, you don't reckon you'd have any more chance of beating him now than you did as a 12-year-old. <laughs> Go easy, you old boar. <laughs> I'm always catching myself saying that, you know. <laughs> Go easy, you old boar. <laughs> uh, it's good to see some things haven't changed. Oh, that one sounds a little bit less <laughs> uh, problematic. Let's see, Kadean steps back and allows you to breathe again before grabbing you by the shoulders. We heard of your father's passing. Truly, he sits with the golden dead now. Tell me, how did he die? In glorious battle at my side, listening to Man of War. Two, drunk and reeking of his own piss. <laughs> Three, let's not dwell on old wounds. So, yeah, it's again an interesting choice. I mean, I don't know. It's, each one has some uh, potential. I guess we'll go with the Man of War option. I'm kind of tempted to go with number two. Let's go with number one now. Kadian's eyes narrow, and the old warrior died a fitting death. Kadian is quiet for a moment, then breaks into a grin. We'll raise a cup to his name together, you and I, as soon as you're done with Kato, and I can rustle up some ale fit for a guest. <laughs> I love Kadian already. <laughs> rustle up some ale. Master Cato will chew your ear plenty when you see him, Andros. Lyra, the new master at arms, awaits you by the main entrance. She'll escort you, and don't ask her not to. I would not dream of it. If you think I had a temper, the joke fails to hide the note of anxiety in the grizzled house guard's voice. I shall look for this Lyra, Lyra. Lyra, Lyra. Oh, I got another diplomacy option. What are you hiding from me, old bear? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Uh, I'll go with that one. Failure! Attribute 11 is less than target 15. I won't betray my master's confidence by saying more. Best you see him yourself. The man offers a smile, but it fails to iron out the concerned creases around his eyes. 
iron, iron out the concerned creases <laughs> around his eyes. You know, it's it's a little snappier, I think, than some games we played recently. <coughs> Very well, I'll go look for the Master at Arms. You know, for some reason, every time I see that term, Master at Arms, I think about He-Man. Apparently that's being remade, I heard, this morning. I don't know what's up with that. See, if you want to explore, for old time's sake, take this lantern. Kato will wait, and we don't want you getting lost in the hedge maze again. The man laughs heartily and hands you a small brass lantern. I think we've somehow transitioned into Zork. <laughs> Activate or deactive lanterns by pressing T. Whatever may come to pass, it did this old warrior a barrel of good to see you again, boy. The old man slaps you on the shoulder and parting, almost knocking you off balance. He must be at least partially dwarven. So we got a... There we go, a little lamp. Look at that. I see it. Now let's go. So what are we supposed to do? Just look around. The Zephyr. I need to investigate what is happening with Zephyr. Uh, what is that word? You know, I looked that up one time before. It's like a wind? Wind gust or something? Or a ship? I guess it's in the name of the ship. A mutiny has broken out as the crew refused to bring the ship closer to Hydra. They claimed the land was cursed. The evil Saint Cloud condemned it to eternal winter. The Zephyr was sunk by a terrible, unnameable creature of the deep. That's terrible when you can't even put a, when you can't even like put a name to it. Cthulhuan. Let's try out this lantern. I don't know what I'm doing here. I guess I'm just kind of looking around. Maybe there's a chest out here somewhere. La da 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 da. What is my purpose? Why am I out here? What is that? Dog. Not hostile. The dog sniffs at you expectantly. Pet the dog or leave? Eh, pet the dog. It happily wags its tail as you pet it. Aww. He's kind of a cute little dog, isn't he? See my companion now? No. Nope. Yeah, there's got to be some reason that I'm. Let's see. Small, intensely colorful flowers cover the ground. A sickly sweet scent wafts up as you step on them. Oh, I think we're supposed to be tiptoeing through the tulips. No, I. I don't really see. Am I supposed to pick up some flowers or something? See any reason to be out here? Oh, there's somebody. Okay. Who's this guy? A guardsman dressed in the livery of the noble house baron. Uh, the guard scowls somewhat at you. Lyra is waiting for you just outside the main entrance. She'll take you to the Lord Keto. Talk, trade, steal. <laughs> trade or steal? Is that the same thing in this world? <laughs> Attack. That's a very capitalist attitude. Attack or leave. Let's try talking. Guard has nothing to talk about. Well, with a name like Guard, you know, we could talk about that. How'd you come to be named Guard? What is this? You see roof. You see nothing. Okay, well, I'm getting mixed messages here. Am I supposed to be exploring this thing or just going inside? You know, I think we should probably just... Oh, what was that? There's some kind of crash sound. You know, I think he just... There's another guard. You know, he's probably... There's probably like some big treasure just like right... Oh, here we go. Here we go. You stand before the gate to the hedge maze. It stirs old feelings of both dread and elation. Uh, what's 
been going on in this hedge maze? Uh, the sounds and smells of the estate grounds as they were long ago call to you from distant memory. You feel you could easily plunge into their depths. Let yourself go and remember. No, I'm done with those times. Well, let's see if we can remember something. Which daydream is it this time? Are you valiantly defending me from rebels again? Embla throws a pine cone at you. <laughs> Ouch. Snapping you from your reverie. She's ten years old, and you're a year her senior. Let's play hide and go seek in the maze. I'll hide. You faintly hear someone yell her name from the distance. You better run, star child. Snap out of the memory. So I guess this is another flashback. Only my mother ever calls me that, Imbla says, frowning. Where did you hear it from? Before you can reply, she flings another pine cone at you and before darts off into the maze. Give chase, that's enough. <laughs> chase her down. <laughs> you hear a man's voice yell Imbla's name again. Much closer now. Either way, she's lost you in the winding passages of the hedge maze. Now, why am I starting to think this isn't going to end well? Uh, your memory tugs at you, urging you on to the center of the maze. Oh, so I gotta... It's like a real maze I gotta solve. I've never been very good at these. What is it? You're always supposed to turn right. Take every right turn. Is that the... That didn't work. <laughs> La, 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 la. Center of the hedge maze. You got a bushel. Is there a bustle in your hedge maze? Oh Lord God. Oh. Oh my directile dysfunction is kicking in again. Where is the juicy tender center of the hedge maze? You stand at the center of the maze. This wasn't too bad. It feels much less impressive than you remember. The ornamental pond was once an ocean, the rock at its heart a windswept island. You found me, daydreamer. You remember the tone of her voice and can almost see the impish ten-year-old girl wading through the pond. Why do you always come here? You know it makes things hard for me. Uh, I like the water. It's so calm. Embla shoots you a mischiev mischievous... Is that mischievous or mischievous? I never... Mischievous look. I guess that's better than a pine cone anyway. You notice the faintest tang... There's that word again. Tang. A tang of ozone. She makes a slow motion hop through the water, her fingers trailing the pond's surface. Where water and skin meet, strange colors bleed and spread across the surface. What in the hell? Embla, you'll get in trouble. Stop it. Embla moves her fingers across the water surface like a painter's brush. Colors spill across the pond, and for a sleeping moment, you fancy that you can see cloud-topped mountains. And was it the ramparts, ramparts of an impossibly large city reaching towards the heavens? The silence is shattered, shattered by a shout, along with the beguiling images. Mistress Embla! The master requests you in the house immediately. That's my father. Something's wrong. Wait, who's the father? Is this me saying this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's mother. She's ill again. I think I cause it. I think I cause it. What I can do. It poisons her mind. How long until mother isn't mother? Or until father isn't lord or your father isn't master at arms? How long will any of it last? Why are you talking like this? I don't know. No one does. Everything falls apart in the end. Yes, everything falls apart in the end. We're very, very sort of channeling Morrissey here, I think. <laughs> you ever feel like everything is a lie? Like there's a veil that covers everything, but in some parts it's thin enough to see through? Embla starts as your father steps breathily into the enclosed garden. He's red-faced from exertion and anger. So my dad's the man-at-arms, and I guess her dad is the, the king or the lord. Young lady, 
You can't run off like this. The whole estate is looking for you. Your mother is ill and needs you now. <laughs> Say nothing. <laughs> Your father shoots you a stern glance. I'll deal with you later. Uh oh, I definitely don't want to hear your dad saying that. Uh, Emla says nothing as your father grabs her by the arm and hauls her past you back to the house. She doesn't meet your eyes as you pass. As you, she doesn't meet your eyes as you pass. Running yourself back in the present, a chill has crept into your bones. You best move on. Well, I guess that was. All this was just a way to get me to that flashback, a little exposition, a little uh, memory, kind of weird memory, but now can I get out of the hedge maze? <laughs> there we go. Okay, I'm pretty sure that was what I was supposed to do. So let's go on inside. Let me go ahead and save it here. I feel like we're making some progress. Okay, who is this joker? A woman stands before the main entrance to the villa. Her posture speaks of a graceful coiled power, that of a dueling ace. No doubt she is the new master at arms for House Baron. As you approach, she offers a quick, neat bow, just low enough to be respectful. Greetings, Andros. Master Cato welcomes you back to House Baron. He awaits you at his offices, but he graciously gives you leave to tour the grounds of the estate before meeting with him. He seemed to think you would want to. Let's just get it over with. Why have I been summoned? The grounds? Why? I guess uh, probably number two. That is for the master himself to answer. Should we go to him? Fine. Very well. If it pleases you, the master is in his office just ahead. <laughs> and if it does not please you, his office is just ahead. Yes, I remember the way. I suppose you do, but I'll escort you nonetheless. A flicker of a smile plays across her face as she beckons for you to lead the way. Ah. Okay. The opulence has faded, the shadows longer. Clearly much has changed since the last time you were here. Try to remember how long it's been. It's been years, perhaps decades since you were here. Not since your father was the house arms master. Not since... Dot, dot, dot. And clearly something bad has happened. So you must have your wits about you, and perhaps now is not the time to dwell on painful memories. Not since... <laughs> dwell. Not since your father's fall from grace. You were no more than twelve when you were driven from the household. Hard were the years that followed. The mercenary life is bloody and unforgiving. Those years stole your childhood, and eventually they took your father too. But your father has all, had always insisted to his dying breath that his failure had been his own, that he had gotten the fate he deserved. Memories are painful nonetheless. So I'm, not, I'm pretty sure we're not supposed to know what they're talking about yet. We're going to learn that as we play along. Your footsteps echo across the lavish villa. Yeah, I like this flavor text, Pops. Every now and then there's some flavor text along the bottom of the screen. I just can't go that way. The navigational rosette that serves as the sigil of House Baron decorates the floor. You know, it looks like I should be able to go that way. Can I go that way? No. <laughs> okay, let's just go on inside. Flanking the doorway are two marble statues. The craftsmanship is stunning, but the sight of the two women depicted fills you with sadness. Examine them. One you recognize immediately, Valeria Baron. The mistress of the house. You remember her as a gray ghost, absent and unwell. The other statue depicts the girl you once knew so well. Embla Barrett, daughter of the house and now a woman grown strong and clear-eyed. Her likeness has none of her mother's cowed timidness. How is Mistress Valeria these days? 
The mistress is vacationing in the countryside. Lyra answers curtly. And what of Embla? Lyra's eyes flicker ever so slightly. We should hasten to Master Baron. He's long been impatient to see you. A little tease. You know, Al's a good storyteller. You know, you, you can tell he's done some role playing, some dungeon mastering in his day. A reflecting pool with a perfectly still surface. For some reason, it fills you with dread. Okay, I guess this is the place to go, right? Ah, handsome man. Kito Baron sits tall in a tasteful but modest reception room. He looks less imposing than you remember, and with a few more crow's feet. Nonetheless, he's lost none of his composure or air of casual authority. You can take a seat across a formidable desk from him. This study, like the rest of the villa, is half-lit, giving a morose cast to its opulence. The older man's face creases into a tired but genuine smile, which momentarily lifts some of the room's oppressive mood. It's a mercy to see you again, your own man and in your prime, Caleb says before a frown consumes his smile. It's just a shame our reunion is overshadowed by the fates of those we love. But perhaps together we can yet improve our collective circumstances? Why have you summoned me? So you know my father is dead. You know, again, interesting dialogue options. Let's just do the first one. Imbla is missing. Tato's voice quivers momentarily, betraying his stoic features. Now I beg of you, Andros. Help me find my daughter. Help her return home where she belongs. What's happened to her? She left without notice a week ago. From the scant clues we had, we believe she boarded a ship bound for one of the outer isles, Hydra. She went of her own free will. At the time, I thought little of it. Cato begins to glower. Since then, however, there have been reports. Grave ones. No one and no word has left Hydra in days. Whom has it even the Imperial Argus are in the dark? I know not how this touches the fate of my daughter, but she must be returned to me, one way or another. Any idea why she left? Something has been building in her for years. An aptitude of sorts. But I suspect you already knew. In any case, it's grown much stronger lately and drives her in ways I cannot understand. See, you can tell... Cato Baron is, is a very smart guy because he knows where to put apostrophes. <laughs> I suspect she is looking for answers. Let's see, an aptitude? I'm guessing she's some kind of magic user. So this is magic frowned upon in this world. An aptitude of the worst kind. It does not spring from the canonical imperial praxis. Instead, it comes from elsewhere. It is the kind the Empire does not suffer to exist. I hope it's only answers that she seeks. Why, Hydra? Why, indeed. There is little on the island, save the port of Horan. If Hydra was her destination, she must have landed there. She must have landed there. Horan? What of her aptitude? <laughs> Okay, I've already seen that. I've seen that. What can I do? Hire mercenaries. Travel to Hydra. Begin your search in the port of Horan. From there, I trust you to do what needs be done. Spare no cost. Just bring back my daughter. Mercenaries? Yes. If nothing else, the port will be dangerous enough. If nothing else, the port will be dangerous enough. I recommend you begin by seeking out Roland Grey Eye. Yeah, I remember him. A crude but effective cell soul that I've made good use of before. Roland Grey Eye? The man is a grizzled veteran. He may have slowed with age, but his experience and reliability more than make up for it. He's also much respected by similar men, and so will be instrumental in hiring a reliable crew. Ah, consider it. 
Tito shows you his upturned palms, beseeching. I know this thing I ask of you is fraught with danger, but this is your chance at improving your fortune, materially and in honor. What say you? I accept for Embla's sake. Very well for my family's name. I'll do it for the gold. <laughs> what makes you think I care? I think we want to go with number one, sounds like. Kato smiles softly, visibly relieved, and for a moment he looks like the man you remember. Have you any final questions or matters to discuss? Time is, I'm sure you appreciate, of the essence. Let's just get on with it. Kato stands with poorly concealed effort. And Andros, you stand and meet his gaze. And Andros, return her to me. There is no other outcome of this affair. Shake his hand and leave. Remain silent and leave. You have my word, Kato. And then leave. Do that one. Okay. Pretty cool. You're awoken by the cacophonous cries of gulls circling you. Your body is a mass of pain and exhaustion, covered in a thousand cuts and scrapes. Slowly, you drag yourself from the cold water onto the relative safety of solid rock. So I'm guessing we're like back in the present time now. <laughs> Moments of hours pass as you lay still, trying desperately to will some warmth back into your body. Finally, you manage to force your eyes open. By some miracle, you are not only alive, but you find yourself on the shores of the cursed island of Hydra. Strewn around you is the wreckage of the Zephyr, you see no other survivors. Nonetheless, the goal ahead of you is clear. You must venture to rescue your childhood friend from whatever fate has befallen her. Though unless you can find equipment and companions, soon you may have cheated death in vain. Venture forth! Game saved. You know what? Let's save it. Oh, I can't save it. Oh, there we go. Save. <laughs> Safe. Oh, okay, let's see what we got here. There's a lighthouse over there. Wreckage over there. I don't know. I guess we're looking for this port of Horan. Freemark. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is there like a big man? Ah, there we go. So I hit M. Showing me this map. Little yellow dots. I guess those are sites I can go in. Let me look at that again. Q and E to zoom in and out. Okay, let's see if we can zoom all the way in. You know, this reminds you ever play that game Mind Walker? Doesn't that look like Mind Walker? Okay, let's go on over here. Man, you gotta give this guy credit. And I, I don't. Is, is he doing the art, or does he have somebody to do the art for him? I, I don't remember, but this is just really good, <laughs> great art. <laughs> you know, look at that lighthouse. Very impressive. You know, some people are stupid enough to think this kind of thing is easy to do, but I mean, just try it sometime with this, with this, this pixel art. <laughs> Definitely, some it takes some talent. See, an ancient lighthouse rises steeply from the bluffs ahead of you. The beacon is still lit, though it flickers weakly. Okay, so I guess we're going inside this ancient lighthouse? I don't know if that's necessarily the smart thing to do or not. That's why we save the game. Let me see grass. It looks like there's a guy here. One of the fortunate few sailors to survive the sinking of the Zephyr is crouching like a frightened rabbit in the tall grass. Blessed dead, I though I thought missing a T, I think. I thought you were another one of those cursed hounds. I was thinking I was the only one who made it. Hounds? Aye, bloody monsters they are. Look all diseased and rabid. I was trying to make my way up to the lighthouse past the stairs just north of here. 
But there's a whole pack of them there. Might want to look for another route route up there. Lest you end up as dog shit. <laughs> you don't want to end up as dog shit. Especially if you don't have any weapons about you. Okay. You're back. Found anyone else alive? Let's see. Do I do I not have any equipment? Let's, I have a club. This weapon is usually just a shaped piece of wood. Sometimes with a few nails or studs embedded in it. You know, man, if you need a definition or description of what a club is, you probably shouldn't be playing the game. You'd probably be back at school. Uh, okay, let, uh, you know, I'm going to just see if I could trade with this guy, maybe. Trade slash steal, why not? Uh, I don't think he's got anything. Okay, let's just leave him alone. I don't see any reason to attack. Oh, what happened there? I tried to save it and it crashed. Yeah, you know, that, that does happen. You know, I was thinking a, a while ago when you learn to play baseball, they say, like, batter, 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 swing, you know? With the beta, it's kind of like, beta, 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 crash! Hopefully we can reload. Man, it's a good thing I, like, saved it there. I think this is my save. Oh, we're kind of back here. Eh, let's... I can uh, get to where I was pretty easily, I think. Lovely pixel art. The dude in the grass. Levin, apparently is his name. I don't know if it's important for me to see all that dialogue or not, but I just don't... I could be remembering those things. So he said that I need to find another route up to the lighthouse. There's some kind of dogs, I guess. Hounds. The hounds of hell. Trouble is, I... Whoa! What the hell? There are enemies nearby. Charge! A, a fail hound. F-E-L-L -L hound. 12 hit points. Andros is armed with unarmed. Wait a minute, I got some... What? Oh, I guess it... When it crashed, I guess it... It must have crashed. Anyway, <laughs> I got the club ready. Andros is armed with club. Target is out of range. Move forward or equip a ranged weapon. Let's just see what happens if I... Can I make him come to me? Defend. Oh, look, that other guy's coming over here. Maybe I should move up and get some assistance. Maybe one more time should do it. Uh-oh. Oh, I didn't mean to disengage from combat. Well, I, didn't, I, guess, <laughs> I guess that's okay. <laughs> wow, he did some damage. I'm down to 14 health already. Hit him for four points of damage. Still up. Oh, this is not good. I might have, let's see, do I have a healing potion? Oh, I don't have the healing potion anymore. Yeah, this is not good. Let's just hope I can take him out. Whew, you defeated your enemies. Each party gained 80 XP. There's loot on the ground. Picked up Hound Ear. Really? A ragged ear from a fell hound. It's a dog-eared item. Well, geez, did I heal up automatically? Do you heal up after combat? Uh, yeah, I guess I must have healed up a little bit. I'm not sure exactly. I'll try to save it again. 
Oh, and it crashed again. Oh, it's just not letting me save it. <laughs> oh, that's not good. I wonder why it won't let me save. Beta, 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 crash. Hopefully one of the uh, features he will be adding is a uh, working save. <laughs> I don't know if the auto save is a little bit further along. Let's see. No, crap. I gotta do all that again. You know, I hate to say it, but if I can't save the game, I don't think I'll be able to get very far. That is not good. I'll try it one more time. You know, I don't know what the deal is. This time he might kill me too. Put the weapon on. Let's just go in and attack. Just keep on attacking. Got him again. Cool. Grab the ear. Okay, I'm going to try to save it one more time. I'll try a different save, I guess. Let's put it in the f first slot, I guess. What? Did I, did I actually load instead of save? <laughs> Man, my, my that out of it. Jesus Christ, I think I did. Okay, let me just say, try to save it here. Let's see, escape. Save. There. Okay, so I guess the save is working. Maybe something was just corrupt about that third one. I don't know. Okay, let me go fight this dog. <laughs> third time. <laughs> Should be getting a lot of experience. If only it worked that way. Pretty badass looking dog. This one was like a warthog. That other guy is trying to get over here. Levant, I think. Levin. Oh, he might get me this time. <laughs> oh my god. Game too difficult? Yes, it's very difficult, especially when it comes to saving. Okay, I'm gonna... There's no way I'm gonna stop before I've killed that dog and successfully saved it. Where is he? There he is. First return on your turn to auto-resolve combat. Yeah, I should probably see what the auto-resolve looks like before, we, before we're done. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, this is too much. Jesus, I guess I got very lucky those first couple of times. Maybe I'm going to have to... You know, I don't even think I... Did I have my I have stupid... Okay. Let's see if I can save it again. Like, now I'm all nervous about saving it. Okay, I'm going to try this. I think it was... I think I didn't have my club on last time. So two damage. No, oh, he's going to get me. Oh, I defeated him. <laughs> wow. Tough game. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. Can I save it here? Okay, back in business. So I guess it does. I guess it does heal you up a little bit after you defeat an enemy. I know we have to find. I know it uses food. Must be a way to camp or something. What the hell is that? A whale skeleton. Hmm. Can we get around it? 
us. You see a crate. You know, I think sometimes there's like a green eye, like a green eye icon that's over the item. And I think that's the signal that I can actually uh, open it up and, and uh, get stuff out of it. See, so there's a ration in here, a trail ration. I just had one of those. Uh, this can be eaten when the party rests in a camp. And also found a dagger! I think the dagger is better than my club. See, the club does one to three. Dagger only does one to two. It's, it's, it's worth more gold. Also, I guess it's green if it's better. So it does better critical damage. Oh, I don't know. I'll just take his word. Usually what I do in a case like that, because I'm too lazy to actually do the math. <laughs> if it's worth more, usually I just go with it, assume it's better. And let's see, how do you how do you camp? Um Wow, well, what is this? Faction overview. I mean you got factions in here? Man, Al's been a busy guy! Explore the hedge maze at the Baron Estate. There's our journal. You know, I wonder how you camp, though. Is there a camp button here? Maybe like C for camp? No. Maybe I can get to an options menu. Gameplay key bindings. Character sheet C. This kind of reminds me of Ultima. You remember how, like every letter on the keyboard was a, a code of some sort? I think like X was climbs for some reason. Level up L. Inventory E, light torch T, map M. Is there a camp? Quest J. Oh, there's a quick load. Okay. Maybe I should be using that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to write this down. F4 to quick load, F1 to save. Okay, I don't want to get those confused, which that's happened to me before, too. Um, spell book. Well, where's, uh, where's camp? Uh, I don't see camp on there. Maybe it's on, sometimes it's on the map screen, no? Or maybe you have to be like in a certain place to camp. Yeah, I don't remember what the command was in Ultima to camp. There probably was a button for that purpose. Uh, yeah, I wonder if it'll tell me something when I level up. I need 315 more. Man, I feel like there should be a camp button here somewhere. No, anyway. Man. This music and these graphics is just really, really working well together. Tall grass grows here. You could easily hide here if you wanted to. There's the, tr the path again. You know, if I run into a pack of those dogs, though, I really am foobard. Is that the way up? Oh, crap! <laughs> oh, no! I went right into the pack. I gotta get out of here. No way I'm gonna be able to take that many on. Run away! Run away! Get the hell away! Why can't I get away? Run away! How do you flee? <laughs> oh, I can't flee? Alright, maybe I have to... Maybe there's a small chance I could do this. Oh, man, okay. 
You know, I'm almost wondering if this is even the right place for me. You know, maybe I should go look at that wreckage from the boat first. I don't know. Well, we'll just we'll try it again here. You know, since I could use that now, I wonder if using the ration makes you camp. Let's try that. No, I didn't do anything. How do I get out of this menu? Exit. Okay, F1 to save. Okay. <laughs> well, let's not go that way. Let's continue exploring off here to the east. There must be like a back way into this lighthouse besides those stairs. Although why I'm trying to get into the lighthouse, I don't know. Kind of makes sense that you'd want to... There must be somebody in that lighthouse. Okay, here's a... I think I found the back way. Okay, save. <laughs> now let's sneak in. There we go. Ah, cool. A pelt. The boards creak as you walk over them. You see a table. You see a candle, which I think I could... There's that green thing I was telling you about. You see a candle. It won't let me do anything to it. A sturdy wooden chest. Oh, there's a short sword in there, a lantern. And a health tonic. Okay, I think that short sword does 1 to 6, crit 2. Much more valuable. Okay, I hope the owner of that short sword isn't here ready to uh, exact revenge for stealing his stuff. A simple bed. You could rest here if you wanted. Alright. The prospect of resting in a proper bed is a rare treat for a mercenary traveling the roads, so you should think twice before passing up on it. Is there going to be like a Goldilocks situation here in a minute? Make camp. Ah, oh, camp management. Oh, I'm having flashbacks to that Pathfinder Kingmaker game. No! <laughs> Please don't have kingdom management. Please don't have kingdom management. Uh, click time slots to assign camp activities. Is this, like, is this like a Pathfinder thing? You know, I've seen this in a couple games now. It was in that uh, Vikings game too, this business. Uh, you make camp. Assign orders and begin the activities. Break camp when you're ready to leave. The party could use a rest. The party does not require food at the moment. Okay, how do I do the activities? Watch, forage, I guess just rest. <laughs> that would be the point of one guy standing watch over himself. How do I, how do I click? Begin activities? Andros, rested for two hours. Okay, I guess he's good. Is he back up to full snuff? Let's see, I think he's back up to full snuff. Somewhere here there's hit points. 20. Alright. Well, that's cool. Found a place I could rest. Nobody bothered me. Ooh, let's see what was it? Teeth of the lamp. Scraps of smashed wood. Yeah. Great. Why has that got a plus next to it? Oh, six rations. A stinking pile of refuse. Oh, yeah. 
You have a stinking pile of refuse in your house? I guess I could go up to the top of the lighthouse. See, entering into the heart of the tower, you round a corner and stop dead in your tracks. Rising up through the core of the tower is a grotesque looking metallic monstrosity. The strangely organic shapes and odd geometries seem to writhe in the dim light and the laden silver coating casts a ghostly reflection on the walls. For all its alienness, you still recognize the arcane machinery, an ancient imperial reticular node. You suspect this lighthouse was once fueled by reticular energy and that this machine was part of its operation. Am I supposed to know what reticular nodes are? Ah, the stillness and layer of dust, however, tell you that it's long since fallen into disrepair and that the lighthouse is likely now fueled by common oil. So this is like a post-apocalyptic thing. Oh, that looks like something out of Giger, though, doesn't it? Gicha Giga. HR. You think his friends call him HR? Is it Giger or Geiger? Just call me HR. Well, hey, is that a shark jaws? I guess that would make sense in a lighthouse. Drying herbs. Let's get to some herbs. No, oh, it's. You know, it's like sometimes it's green. I don't. It won't let me do anything to it, though. You know what I want to do? I want to get to the top of the lighthouse. No, 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 no. Go up, go up. You climb the narrow creaking stairs towards the top of the lighthouse. You find the door barred from the inside and knock heavily. Moments later, you hear the bar lift. As you enter the lighthouse gallery, a haggard face peers at you from the gloom. Moving closer, you see it belongs to an old man who clutches a makeshift spear tightly to his chest. Somehow he looks both fearful yet greatly relieved to see you. Why does he have an old makeshift spear instead of a short sword that I'm wielding? Mother of Maelstroms, the man croaks. Who are ye then? Who did I summon? Come, sit. You must be weary. Sit, sit. The man gestures frantically to a battered chair in the corner. I'm a mercenary. Travelers, nothing more. Travelers? Am I supposed to have a companion? <laughs> I, may, I probably missed something big. Now, I was shi shipwrecked here by something foul. There are all manner of beasts in the deep oceans of our world, but never have I seen anything like this. A horror from beyond the natural it was that pulled down that ship. I saw it all from my tower, I did. Oh, I wish I did not have to bear such a sight. I can hardly believe. I <laughs> believe. I can hardly believe that anyone could survive such a nightmare. You know, I kind of, yeah, there's some spelling errors, but I gotta tell you, and the Richard Garriott, he really struggled with spelling too. And I don't know if these are spelling errors or just sometimes it's hard to see in those uh, code programs when you're spelling things wrong. You know, you don't get like in Word where it shows you the, the spellings. Let's see, I did. It matters not what happened here. How then did the tides release you when so many others were claimed? Well, I kind of got a sole survivor situation going. The keeper leans in and fixes you with an unwavering gaze, kind of like this. Are you blessed? Or perhaps cursed is more like it. Have a cursed day. <laughs> you know, next time somebody says that, have a blessed day. I think I'm just going to say it. Have a cursed day. <laughs> Enough. What happened here? Cursed? How so? What happened here? Yeah, wh what's going on here? Something foul is growing on Hydra. A taint on the land. There are lights. Lights as you've never seen. Like those of a lighthouse. <laughs> like those sailors from the high north talk of. 
but the colors is this like color out of space it's like they bleed into your very dreams if you could manage to sleep that is it got to the animals first though warped them in both mind and body made them cruel and dangerous I ain't never seen nothing like it it's unnatural I tell you it is kind of getting a spooky vibe Hey, old Matthias. Continue. But we're still whoring as dead as a tomb. Was a right bedlam of cries and screams two days ago. Then nothing. Not as much as a lit candle at night. Only the deep itself knows the truth of these happenings. But I can tell you this. The island is doomed. The sea itself will rise to claim us. I need some information. Foolish superstition. I need proper information. <laughs> Is anything you may ask, we're safe as can be here. Ask about work. Tell me about Horan. We need a place to rest. <laughs> we? <laughs> ask about work. What of it? What can I do to help? This here beacon is all's keeping the horrors of this island from my throat. Thing is, oil is running low. I got nary a drop left in storage. I need you to find me some oil for darkness. Dawkins. Dawkins takes us. Perhaps there is some of the wreckage of his ship. Matthias stares about blindedly into the... Matthias stares absent-mindedly <laughs> absent into the fire. I was wondering about something else. Is there anything else? Tell me about Horan. When went dark about the same time the animals were run amok. There was smoke on the water, and screams too. I could swear it sounded like battle, or perhaps slaughter is more like it. I think there's a camp of sorts just north of town. I thought about going there to see for myself, but I changed my mind. Okay, I guess we just need to go now. Oh, you have more important matters to deal with. Well, I must keep watching, seeing. The old man shrills off, eyes unfocusing. Forgive me for not being of more help. <laughs> You're a fool to go. There is nothing beyond the light but despair. <laughs> the old man sighs. <sighs> but I'll be here waiting here for you for when you return. As I must. <laughs> You know, I sort of got into that character. It took me a few tries to get him right, but I, I think I kind of nailed it. There towards the end. Okay, so what I gather is we need to go back to the ship, get some oil, and there's probably... Maybe there's some survivors that I could team up with. Not be quite so... So easy to kill. Oh boy, how do I get out of here? Do, do, do. Let me check out my map again. I ain't going the right way. It's a big map. Wow. Okay. Back, 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 back. Do you want to leave the current area? Yes. Okay, I see my ship over there. Let's go over there. Sandy dunes line parts of the Idrin coastline. Save a few odd pieces of useless debris and the stench of rotting seaweed. The dunes are. The dunes are what? I must know what the dunes are! Oh, I can't see the next line! Oh, wow, well, wow. Well. Broken bodies and debris. 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 I hate that word. Lie on the rock, rocky shores of Hydra. Does that have an E in it? <laughs> uh, in the distance, you can see what. Re oh, there's the E. What remains of the Zephyr's Hull. Into. Ooh, it's a spooky. 
You know, this is a good deal. I didn't realize how spooky this was going to be, man. This is a... He's not playing around with that Lovecraft theme. The stench of rotting flesh fills your nostrils. Ahead of you, grotesquely misshapen crustacean horrors feast greedily on the corpses of the dead crew of the Zephyr. Did we end up in Golden Corral? Oh, do I want to go in here? I guess I have to. Hostiles have not spotted the party yet. Am I fighting? <laughs> I guess you could save it. Charge! What is that? Oh, look at that crap! Oh, that's a mighty fine eating right there. Love a nice crab. I don't remember the crabs being quite this rare. Ooh. You defeated your enemies. Each party gained 83 XP. There's loot on the ground. Picked up. Oh my god, another one of these words. Is that Triton or Chitin? I could never remember that. Probably Chitin, just because it looks like Chitin. Chitin. <laughs> Chitin. Uh, let's see, what can I do with... I'm just going to go with Chitin. I don't know. I'm almost always wrong whenever I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess these are like reagents if I had a magic user with me. It's probably good to hold on to them in case I do end up with a magic user. What is that? A corpse of a sailor from the Zephyr. Oh, that's sad. My former buddies. Smashed wood. Well, wow, even this wreckage is big. Is this all supposed to be the ship? Let's see, I'm a little bit confused as to what is the ship. <laughs> There's those flowers again. It's like a trail through here. I'm leaving the zone? Yeah, there's got to be more to this ship I'm supposed to find right there. Let's see. Anything up here? I'm yeah, just a little bit confused as to what's... Maybe it just... Maybe, I thought I was like actually going inside the, the ship, but it looks more like I'm just kind of on the beach exploring. There's a little dot there. Let me go down there and see what that little dot is. Uh, hopefully I'm not you know, going through enormous amounts of food as I explore. Yeah, let's do the south some more. Okay, just a little bit. There, a crate. Corpse. So we got corpses. Maybe that's something else. Oh, is that the same crate? I guess that's just showing me where the crates are. Okay, well. Beach. Uh, if there's any survivors around here, I don't see them. There's some more debris. Let's see. Stay in the area. Let's just uh, explore the rest of this, I guess. You know, I'm glad he put this map in there. So it looks like maybe just keep going north. Oh, that's better. Is that lightning? Making it flash like that? Oh, what's this? Mud. A grim monolith rises from the rugged landscape. Ancient and weathered. The stone must have stood here for centuries. Painted on it are crude, spiral-shaped runes, and at the base of the monolith, monolith <laughs> lie piles of eggshells, flowers, and fish bones. Examine closer. You make little of the symbols. As you pick through the small pile of offerings, it occurs to you that these can't be more than a few weeks old. Okay, 
mildly spooky. Let's explore a little bit more of this. Ah, chest. Yes, chest. Whoa, where are you going? Whoa! Where are you going? Oh, he's got... Oh, oh. Well, maybe he knows where he's going. I don't know. He's going somewhere. that a trinket some jewelry that can be sold for a few coins and I can't wear it I guess well that's all right got me a suit of scale mail now we're talking the party is encumbered and cannot move oh no why can't I move what? What? Wait. 87. Oh, okay. What to drop? I guess I'll drop this stupid club. That's not going to be good enough. Do I really want to drop my knife? Weighs four. Not dropping the gold, that's for damn sure. I don't, I don't know if I want to drop this scale mail. I mean, I might find a, a partner here in a minute that could use it. I might have to, though. I guess I could drop the dagger. Ugh, this doesn't feel right. Man, I still not... Ugh, drop the hellhound here. Oh, encumbrance, how I loathe thee. Well, at least it looks like I can come back for it, maybe. Hopefully that will be persistent. If I have to, I can come back for it. What? You didn't have a hound here? You need a hound here to get through this gate. You know that's going to happen like five minutes from now. <laughs> We're like right at the end of the game. Oh, well, of course you have the hellhound here. What? Oh, he changed his, uh... Look at you. What? What? Hang on, I got it. Yeah, use that again. No, 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 unequip. Yeah, he changes his, uh, sprite. Oh, check that out. Ah. Yeah. I'm easily amused. Hostiles have not spotted the party yet. The battle erupts. Press return on your turn to auto-resolve combat. You know, just to see what it does, let's try that. So it says press return. Alright, so the game is playing itself! <laughs> it did better than I could have done. <laughs> Uh, that's great though for like routine little battles, I'm sure. Do it all and leave. Oh, I'm gonna be encumbered again. I hate you! <sighs> Fine, I'll drop the scale mail. Oh, I really hope it doesn't disappear. Alright, what else we got there? A beached boat. What is this? Is there a lobster? Look, a lobster. Let's cut it under the sea, little guy. <laughs> you like being under the sea so much? Come here. Battle erupts. Press return on your turn. No, no, I want to do it properly this time. Look at that little crab. Cool. Pick your crab. 
each party member gained 83 XP. Picked up. Kitten. I wonder how close I am to leveling up. 45 to go. Okay, so it does look like it is... A sling. I found a, a sling. Well, that's interesting. Does that mean I have ranged attack now? Can I? Oh, I have to choose that or the the knife. Huh. Well, let's just see how it works, I guess. Hopefully, I'll have to go pick up each individual rock after every battle. That was fun! Um, I have no idea. What hostile? Oh, I see a couple of creepy crawlies up there. Okay, let's try the sling. Boom! Okay, I guess I need to switch to my other weapon now. What? Huh? What? Okay, that was weird. Let's see, inventory. Beta, beta, beta! Be weird. <laughs> beta, 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 glitch! Okay, that is really weird. So I guess I can't shift. Maybe if I hit E for equipment. No. No, come on. <laughs> equipment. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Death by glitch. Uh, I gotta get the hell out of here. Oh, that was crappy. So apparently you could not... You cannot switch back and forth. Maybe you're supposed to be able to. It's just not working at the moment. <laughs> that sucked. I'm going back to the the knife. Oh, I think I just use that. Okay. Let's get out of here. Exit. <clears throat> I don't know, that seemed like a pretty tough battle for just one dude. I keep feeling like I'm supposed to have a companion with me. Laying ahead of you like some gargantuan, gargantuan beached sea creature are the smashed remains of the Zephyr. You shudder to think of the monstrosity that caused the demise of the once elegant ship. Uh, nothing in that chest. Okay, let's see. Maybe I can defeat two of them. Might go a little bit better if I not lose them my turns. Yeah. I wish I could just keep clicking on them instead of having to do this continue business. Oh, I guess if you use the mouse, you can. Okay, one down. Nope. <laughs> you can set the difficulty in options, so oh, shut up. Shut up. Is the game too hard for you? Well, you can dumb it down, dummy. Okay. Don't think I can handle that many lobsters. Ooh, what's this? A bottle of strong spirits. Yes, I need that. Oh my god, give me that right now. Give me those spirits. Alright. Now I can take on the lobsters. You know, I'm thinking if I like can keep from getting surrounded, maybe. If for some reason it wants me to keep hitting like what or continue. Okay, one down. Now I'm just gonna like back up. See if I can Yeah, maybe get into that corner there. Yeah, this should work, right? 
I don't know, can I attack diagonally? Actually, not sure. Nope. Don't think it'll matter. Oh, that crab's coming around the other way. Oh. Okay, can I get to my inventory? I gotta use the... If I can get to that potion, we're just screwed. Okay, it worked that time. All right, good. Come on, this is... Oh, got him! Okay, this is so close. Oh, don't kill me, don't kill me! Oh! Oh, no! Kill that thing! Kill it! <laughs> got him. Man, that was close! 249 XP, got some loot leveled up. Holy cow, buying off five feats. Oh, okay. There we go. You know, so the beta thing, it was saying that this stuff's not implemented or some of it's not implemented. I don't know what the deal is. So I don't know if this actually does anything at this point. I guess we could, well, we could test it out, huh? Let's see what's going on here. Is the green stuff I already got? Is it like recommended stuff? Uh, hmm. Expert in piercing. Critical hits with piercing weapons now cause bleeding. Dirty fighting increases your critical chance. That's a passive feat. Takes 15 points though, and I've only got 10. Oh, maybe the green is like stuff I can actually afford. I gotcha. So we can increase stealth. Increase agility. Increase our movement in combat. Critical hits with piercing weapons. Now I'll cause bleeding. Do I have a piercing weapon? I've got a, uh... What do I have? A short sword? I think that's probably slashing. Eh, let's just get this anyway. Yeah. Let's see. The sword. Well, I don't know if a short sword is considered a slashing weapon or a stabbing weapon. It's a short sword. <laughs> Say that like I know it's like I know anything about it. Uh, I don't know. I guess we could look at the combat log next time and see what kind of damage I'm doing. Okay, well, my God, I'm ready to go inside there. Oh, the rainy horrors! <laughs> you emerge into the broken hull of the ship. Movement immediately catches your eyes. The grotesque, squirming mass of fur and glistening teeth tell you that you're not the only passenger for the Zephyr to make it to shore. <laughs> Ooh, hey, the, oh, look at that. Ugh. I don't even know if I could eat that. Okay, let's save. For the love of God, save. <laughs> All right. Hostiles have not spotted you. Let's I don't really know what the... I only get one option to charge. Oh, well, there's four of these things. I don't look like I'm at full health either. Well, let's just play it out. Let's try to use a feat. Backstab. Pierce armor. Well, these things, I don't think these things have armor anyway. Oh, kill him with one blow. Critical hit. Opponent is bleeding and takes extra damage. Yes, yeah, you should take extra damage. You die. There's another one. Get her. Come to Papa. <laughs> oh, God. Yes. <laughs> 390 CXP. Now I'm starting to cook. 
Now I'm starting to cook. Let's take a look at that log. Yeah. Let's see, so am I doing slashing damage? Andrus. Doesn't say what type of damage I'm doing. Best of two, dodge. Rabbit. Did I say rabbit? <laughs> rabid rat. Okay, okay loot all and loot. Got me four rat tails. So I honestly don't know what type of damage a short sword does. Battle erupts is another one? Oh, it's like Christmas. Move forward or equip a ranged weapon. You know, this is stupid. This is stupid what I'm about to do here. Let's just see if I can switch back and forth. Because I feel like I should be able to do this. Okay, now he's here. Okay, yeah, this is how it should work, I think. It must just have been a... a glitch before. Oh, here comes another one. You know, I wonder if I could... You know, this would be kind of... What the hell? Oh. I wonder if I could, like, attack and then run. No. <laughs> I guess he figured that out. <laughs> you know, because he had a range weapon, he could just attack, back up, back up. I don't think he'd let you do that, though. Okay. I gotta tell you the truth, I don't have a whole lot of health here. Don't know how many of those fights I could take. Look at all these rat corpses. Doesn't that warm the heart? Okay. Goodness gracious God! Many rats are up in there. Well, I definitely should have rested before I came in here. Is that a special rat? A dire rat! Oh man, he's got him kind of choked up in here, but oh no. I need a I'm gonna have to get my healing potion here. Matter of fact, maybe I need two. Did that work? Got the dire rat down! Now see, I wanted to come in there one at, yeah, one at a time. Oh, there's another dire rat up there. See him? Alright, man, this is... Oh, no! Okay. Potion, potion, potion! <laughs> that was close. Oh my god. And I'm level 3. Check me out. Ah, oh, what do I want to get? Bloodthirsty takes 30. I've only got 10 again. Should I be saving it? Saving up? Mm hmm. I guess increased agility maybe. Yep. Okay, I need to rest. Is there a place to rest in here anywhere? Maybe I need to go back to the lighthouse. That's a long trek, though. Woo! What's all this? Scale mail. Spirit. Skip that for sure. Yep. A sling. I already got one. Jewelry. Oh, no, 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 no. Put it in the container. You know, I'm going to put that extra scale mail in there, too. I, I, I just keep thinking there's got to be... What is this? Oh, lighthouse oil. 
Okay, well that might be you know a decent spot to to quit because I got the or quit the video anyway. Uh, I got what the uh, lighthouse keeper wants, so let's see if we can get that back to him. What's this stuff? A cutlass. A cutlass is a curves sword. Curvy, curved sword favored by sailors and swordsmen of Yombaria. Another mace. I know a mace is not a. I know a mace. Attunement tonic. That's worth quite a bit of gold. Maybe I'll get that. A cutlass is a slashing weapon. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. It can't be. You know, short sword, I could imagine, like, stabbing with that. Piercing. Well, is there anything else to do in here? Doesn't look like it. Huh. Well, maybe that's all she wrote. Now, let's go back to the lighthouse, turn that in, and then we'll, uh... That'll probably be a good stopping point for our video. Oh, I wonder if I could take those dogs out now. Hmm. Yeah. I got some. Let's just check our equipment here first. So I'm rocking this short sword now. It does one to six, it does three to five. So this is maybe better, but again, I'm pretty sure that is a slashing weapon, so I wouldn't be able to use my bleeding. I'll use it anyway. I, he might not have that. Oh, it does say, yeah, it says there's three to five slashing. Okay, well, how did I not notice that before? It goes away. What? What's going on with this? Unequip. Okay. Beta, beta, beta glitch! <laughs> Alright, so if you don't have any weapons equipped, then it'll tell you what kind of damage it does. Once you equip it, though, it doesn't tell you no more. Well, still, I'm glad it shows me, so now I know what to, what to equip. You ever know, you know, somehow it's like, Unequipping things sometimes too. I think that could be me clicking the wrong button somehow. Hey, look, there's a. Whoa, where is it going? We're going after the Pac Man. Where's the power pill? Oh, look, there's a crab. Oh, wait, how many crabs? How many crabs? Oh, I didn't sign up for this. Oh my god. There's way too many. Let's see if I can take these guys. Oh no. This is too close. I gotta have Oh grab a potion. I'm going through these potions. Probably not supposed to be using so many. Oh, how many? Yeah, I might have to take another one. Okay, wow. What happened to my scale mail? <laughs> I think I dropped my scale mail. Oh my god. God, I'm a noob. Okay. God, no wonder I'm taking so much damage. I left my scale mail. I must have accidentally gotten rid of all of it. Didn't mean to do that. That was dumb. I guess I'll get lucky. There'll be some more. What's that? Padded armor. Padded armor. What football players wear? Well, it's probably better than nothing. You know, I, I think I'm taking all this damage though because I don't have my 
Had that nice scale mail. Just run back, grab that scale mail. Well, that's gonna be a good test too to see if it actually, uh, you know, if it uh, gets rid of items when you leave the map. So let's see, it's way up there, unfortunately. I don't think there's random encounters. At least I haven't just randomly encountered anything yet. Oh, I can't click it though? Oh, come on now. Look. <laughs> oh, get items. Okay, yeah. Yeah, let's put some in the container that we don't need, right? Is that how that works? Put in the container. Put that in the container. Where's the armor? Oh, did I not? Where did I leave that armor? Oh, Lord. Where? <laughs> Backtracking. Uh -huh. oh, good Lord. Is that it? Yeah, here we go. And how in the hell did I drop that? Yes, equip it. That's five armor. Okay, now we should be good. Did I? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Alright. I can't move again. Ah! I just love encumbrance in video games. It's very important to maintain absolute realism when it comes to the amount of shite one can carry upon one's back. Uh, you want to leave the current area? Yes. Okay, now. Now we're cooking. Into here. You know, the trouble is I'm still so low on health, though. You know what I need to do? Let's do this. Let me, uh, I'll go in, rest, and then we'll fight the dogs. That sounds like a plan to me. Something I can find those stairs again. Yeah. Oh. You know some big maps he's made here. I don't know if you can appreciate this tea, but there's a lot of variety in the, in the tiles. It takes time to draw them, but then to implement them well. Okay. Yes, rest up! <laughs> Just rest. Now, how do you make... There must be some way to make camp on that other map. I just didn't see it. Okay, how do you do this? Oh, that was not enough to heal him up all the way? That's good enough. Okay. Let's go fight those dogs. Killed me before, but now I'm back. And I brought my short sword. Where are these damn fell hounds? You get him to come to me. Yeah, there you go. Right up into that kill zone. <laughs> and for eight points of damage, he should be bleeding. Oh, I gotta do a critical hit, I think, to make him bleed. Alright, let's see if I can just... Yeah, there we go, there we go. Ha <laughs> ha! Stupid dog! 
Man bites dog. Yeah, teach you to kill me. Teach you to kill me. <laughs> Alright, let's give this lighthouse keeper his stuff. His oil. A stinking pile of refuse. You think the lighthouse keeper has been... Using the facility. I bet you we get something good when we give this bag of oil. Yeah, 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 yeah. About that job. I have the oil! Tide, stake me, I need you, Kadot. All I have to offer in way of reward is my old sword. It won't serve me well, but it's getting too heavy for me now. Take this, it's dangerous to go alone. Matthias produces an old but well-crafted broadsword wrapped in cloth. Don't you see I'm a rogue, you old man? You're a fool to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there you have it, folks. I mean, this game is just really kicking ass. Lots of fun. I mean, it's still in beta. It's slashing damage. But man, I mean... This is more than enough here to tell me this is definitely something I will want to play the hell out of when it does in fact come out. As a matter of fact, I really want to finish this pro prologue out, but <laughs> I don't want to spoil the whole thing for you. Uh, but anyway, uh, definitely go check this out on Steam. I think it's well worth... Uh, I don't even know if it costs anything. Is it free? I have to confirm that. But man, what a great, what a great time. You know, it's, it totally nails for me that uh, sort of early Ultima experience, but the, I like the Lovecraftian theme. It's a little bit spooky. Uh, that's cool. Let's see if I get the... Yeah, there we go. So I've already... I might have already purchased this. I don't... I don't know if it's free to the regular folk. I guess I can log out here and see what it says. Oh, go back to the game. Yeah, it's free. I mean, <laughs> yes, I can I can 100% say it is worth the money. Uh, you definitely want to check this out. Now, there is some issues here. Uh, I think it says somewhere in here. Yes. So look at this little part here. Oh, come back here. Oh, we're... Currently, we do not support using the prologue save file for the main game after launch. So... You know, unless you just really uh, want to, you probably don't want to play through the whole... Sounds to me like you don't want to play through this whole thing. Because right? you have to redo it, sounds like, once the game comes out. You know, it just says they're not supporting that right now. Maybe it's something they'll, they'll he will, uh, you know, fix if there's so, enough demand for it. Prologue features about one to two hours of gameplay. I'm pretty sure I hit that already. <laughs> I don't even know how when this prologue actually ends with Man, this is going to be good. Really excited about this. Yeah, very positive. That's that's what I would say, too. Very positive about this game. Uh, I like the, you know, there's a few little glitches. I mean, it's to be expected. Uh, hopefully, Al will, uh, you know, maybe watch this video and see some of, the, <laughs> some of those little glitches. He probably knows about them already. Uh, it, sounds, it looks like he needs a good proofreader. You know, that kind of thing can be distracting. Again, it's a very simple thing to fix, probably. Uh, but I don't, I don't really want to get hung up on, like, minor things. Because, I mean, overall, really, really good. I think it's it kind of captures that magic again of those early games. But uh, it does it in a way where... How to put this? It's like it's the parts that you, you like about those games. Or you remember with fondness, uh, without some of the pain... Uh, of those early interfaces. I mean, here we got quick saves and then the map you can bring up pretty easily. Uh, I think the storytelling, though, is, you know, it's, I'm not going to say my expectations were low. <laughs> uh, this is, you know, really good stuff. I mean, the, yeah, spelling, okay, spelling errors aside, uh, I like the way that he has set this up. Uh, the dialogue options are a lot more interesting, really, uh, to me, because he, you know, every time, I'm like, hmm, do I want to go with that? It, it wasn't like, there wasn't like an obvious choice. 
and all the options kind of made you curious like I wonder what would happen if I went with that one uh, which that to me you know having played a lot of games like this that's something that's not easy to do it's not as easy as it might look uh, the art let's see does it have does he have the credits on here somewhere I'm trying to remember if it's like a one-man team or, or what let's see developer escape it uh, let's see if I can find I want to learn about this team so I don't give you wrong information how many people are on the team? Scald, yes. Development. Somewhere here there must be a... Maybe... Developer. Yeah, I was seeing if I could find a... More information about the team. Yeah, follow Escape It on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> like a wild goose chase. A small software studio, yes. Norway, northern Norway, remember that. Oh, anyway, folks, I can't tell you. I don't want to spend all day. I'll, I'll try one more thing. Yeah, maybe I'll just pause it and find out. That's a good idea. Yeah, so as far as I can tell, it just says projects being developed by a Norwegian one man in the studio escape it escape it so I guess he's you know I sure hate to be wrong about this but I'm pretty sure he's doing all this all the artwork and everything so that's just super duper impressive I mean it's really hard to find somebody that's got that the art skills with the writing skills <laughs> with the coding <laughs> with the level design yeah, that is very impressive. So anyway, yeah, if you're on the fence, I guess, about this game, you can't actually pre-order pre it yet, as far as I can see. Again, I should have probably looked this up. <laughs> for giving information. It just says it's, uh... So you can put it on your wish list. Let's see, GOG. Let's see. Scald against coming soon. Notify me. So you can't... I guess he doesn't want to, like, pre-sell it. Well, so good for him. But you can certainly download this demo and have some fun with it. Explore a richly illustrated world of authentic pixel art using thousands of hand-drawn tiles and images. Check. A palette inspired by the legendary Commodore 64 computer. Well, that's interesting. For some reason, I was thinking Apple too, but I guess now that I'm seeing that, it does look a lot more Commodore 64-ish than Apple II-ish. Optional CRT filter for that authentic old school experience. What? Okay, okay, let's load it back up. I gotta see that. Where did I miss that option? Optional CRT. You are running through it like an old crappy monitor. Okay, what was that Commodore 64 monitor called? Oh my god. Like it on the name of the thing. Let's see, where is our save? Uh, options, maybe? Video? CRT. Ah. Ah, this. <laughs> Oh, I don't know about this. You know, is that what you want? Fuzzy. Oh, I don't like that. You know, this is like after you've had a few pints of ale. <laughs> I should call this the ale mode. Alright, get out of you guys. Oh, get your gear yet. Lord <laughs> Oh my god, oh yeah, turn that off. Turn that off. Get off! Yeah, do not leave that on body full. Yeah, I, I like it a lot better like this, don't you? Yeah. You see a bit. Okay, folks, I'm turning this thing off. 
Really fun game. Skull against the Black Priory. Priory. Really looking forward to it. You grab the demo, I guess, now. The prologue. See what it's all about. Have your own adventure. I didn't play it all the way through, so... <laughs> not sure how much is left, but you can find that out on your own. Anyway, I'm going to stop it here. And, uh, see you soon. all for this week's episode i hope you guys enjoyed that i don't know what's up with the weird voices today <laughs> maybe i had a little bit too much fun playing against the black priory uh, i don't know anyway i'm really excited about this game i can't wait for the full version to come out i think i'll hold off and uh, you know wait for that you know before i get back into it because i'm a little bit a little bit worried if i get too far and then have to re uh, restart you know i don't know how that'll work uh, my advice now would be to see if there's some way to uh, let you just load in that save game you know, I don't know how hard that would be technically, but that would be pretty cool if you could do that. Just go straight from the demo uh, into the full game. Uh, anyway, uh, I want to thank everybody. I uh, thank you uh, very, 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 very much for making this video possible. I couldn't do Mad Chat without you. I wouldn't do this without you. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> you know, it's all about you guys and gals uh, who are willing to, to step up to the plate, put a dollar into the the hat or the helmet to keep these uh, shows on. I mean, 469 episodes. I mean, don't you want to see me make it to 500? <laughs> don't you want to see like Match Hat 500? You know, make that happen. Uh, go to that link in the show notes to the Patreon site. It's on a buck a show. That's all I ask. It's not going to break the bank, I promise you. And you'll get a lot more out of the show that way if you support it. You know, then it becomes our show. Not just something that you watch and, and have a lot of uh, laughs, you know. <laughs> I didn't pay. I'm still watching, but I didn't pay a dollar. <laughs> you don't want to be that guy. Come on. Uh, be a real uh, rat. <laughs> be a rabid rat. And go uh, sign up today. Uh, very easy. It takes a few seconds. Of, you know, you can... I think I mentioned this before. A lot of people think you got to get a subscription. And then you got to worry about, am I still subscribed? And, you know, all that jazz. You know, they've done away with that. I mean, you can set that up if you want, but you could also just say, look, you know, here's 10 bucks. We'll just say that's going to cover, you know, the next 10 months or whatever, uh, 10, 10, 10 episodes. And then maybe uh, after then I'll come back and put in another 10 bucks. You know what? If that's what you want to do, that's fine. I don't care. Uh, the only thing I care about is, hey, you're supporting the show and I appreciate that. So thank you. Uh, uh, and by the way, uh, welcome to some new patrons here. Snapping Snapper. Snappy, snappy, snap. You know, there's a restaurant in uh, Louisiana when I go visit my, my folks there. <laughs> I think it's called Snappy's. Or uh, no, it's not. a uh, God, dog. I'm like, I'm going to blank on the name of this place. But it's like a, a fish. It's a seafood restaurant. <laughs> the only reason I bring it up is it's, it's kind of fun when you order food there. Instead of saying, I want a spicy or I want a Cajun, uh, you, you're supposed to say, make it snappy. So you're like, you know, hey, I want the, you know, the catfish and make it, make it snappy. Or you can make it snappy, snappy. You know, they have, they have some fun with that. But anyway, Snappy Snapper, you probably like that place. Maybe you could tell me, remind me what the name is. I'm just blanking on it at the moment. Maybe like Catfish Shack or something. I don't know. Uh, anyway, it's a good place. <laughs> I'm recommending a place. It'd be kind of nice if I could actually tell you the name of the restaurant. Uh, you know, I'm getting older, folks. And my memory is not what it never was. Uh, also, welcome to Garen. I'm pretty sure Garen, maybe he's returning. And uh, Nuclear Fiestas. You know, I got a news item. You know, if, if the name the name makes me think that you'll be interested in some of these news, news items I got here. Uh, so stick around, Nuclear Fiestas. But anyway, thanks to, those, thanks to those folks. Thanks to you if you've been supporting the show for a long time. <laughs> you know, some of you have been supporting the show for like, you know, it's like 15 years or something. Crazy. I, I don't know how long we've been doing this even. Too, uh, maybe not long enough, though, let's put it that way, <laughs> to catch myself. Uh, all right, uh, what about that news from the Mac game? All right, quite a few items here. Most of these are from good old Matt, not this Matt, uh, the other Matt. You know, I'll leave you, <laughs> you know, I got this, uh, some of the back channels. Everybody seems to be named Matt. There's like 17 Matts on my, uh, you know, news channel uh, to keep me up to date on things. Uh, but anyway, this is Matt W. I'll just leave it at that. I don't know if he wants his name out there. Uh, but this is a summer sale giveaway uh, of a game called Hellpoint. 
it's only good for two days and you can pick I just picked it up myself and I think it ends let's see June 16th so it really pays to watch Matt chat quickly <laughs> if you want a free game let's see I don't know anything about this game released a year ago Hellpoint is a dark and challenging game set in a unique sci-fi universe where the line between science and occultism is blurred line between science and occultism ah. <laughs> sounds like uh, skeptoid's worst nightmare uh, explore the ruins of iris novo space station discover its gruesome secrets encounter cruel interdimensional entities and battle them using dozens of melee and ranged weapons anyway you can't beat free so go check it out uh, and then uh, he also wrote in about this. Now, you remember Well Not Studios. I mean, those guys, uh, Joe and Hannah. <laughs> I got their packets here somewhere. Yeah, this is from them. Uh, that's what this is. If you've ever wondered, like, what is that little thing? You know, they sent me that. Uh, just a lovely duo, fantastic. One of my favorite interviews, really. You know, I should get them back on the show to talk about this. But anyway, they, they've been working on this Mecha Jammer game forever. And apparently they finally got it. Kind of like uh, against the Black Priority, Skull. <laughs> against the Black Priority. <laughs> the Black Priority, I don't know what that is. Uh, like Scald. Folks, it's one of those days. Come on, give me a break. Um, they've got a demo available. All that to say, they've got a demo and a trailer available. You can see what they've been up to. Now, I talked about this a couple times here and there, but just in case you forgot, Mecha Jammer is a tactical... Cy we're really calling it something else, like Cyber Dreams or something. Am I just making that up? Uh, anyway, now it's called Mecha Jammer, a tactical cyberpunk turn-based RPG set on an off-world grindhouse jungle colony. Now, I don't know if that's jungle the music or jungle the uh, the, the climate, <laughs> the eco ecosphere, whatever it is. Uh, skulk through the shadows or charge in guns blazing. Recruit a unique party for large squad-based assaults as your adventure plunges you deep into the city's secrets. Hmm. Uh, you can look at the demo for that. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, I never hear about that kind of music anymore. When I was, uh, I remember coming up, I'd have all these songs on my Amiga, these mods, and be like jungle mods and trance mods and all this stuff. <laughs> you know, I guess that movement continued somewhere beyond the Amiga. I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, that has nothing to do with Mecha Jammer. So if you want to know what does have to do with Mecha Jammer, you can go to Steam or you can, of course, go to their website and read about it. Uh, sounds really good to me. If it's anywhere near as good as Serpent of the Staglands, watch out. <laughs> and my guess is it's going to be better because usually they, you, know, you learn things as you make a game. And you do, you do the stuff that worked well again, and you don't do the stuff that didn't work so well. You know, and you end up getting better. All right, third item, Plague Tale, uh, Requiem. Now, apparently there's a, a game before this, I guess just Plague Tale, I, I don't know. Uh, again, this is one of those that I, I mention it because you can read, you can watch the trailer, I guess, for free. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> well, why is it, why don't I even have this written down? Let me just read the, my notes here. So a Plague Tale, Requiem. Um, this is an adventure game. Embark with Amisha and her brother Hugo on an intense new quest for hope as a terrifying curse hunts them down. And this is developed by Asobo Studio, a French video game developer based in Bordeaux and founded in 2002. Oh, they're known for developing video games adaptations of several Pixar movies. So I remember what it is now. Uh, so Matt was really, really impressed by the graphics and artwork on this. And as you can see from the trailer, uh, as to why he might be so drawn to this. Uh, so definitely check this out, Plague Tale Requiem. Again, I'm not familiar with this Plague Tale, so if, if you've played it, <laughs> please, uh, please share your thoughts in the show notes. Uh, and then finally, on, on my Discord, uh, Lair of the Rat King, uh, there's a fellow there by the name of Sobchuk, and he wrote in about something really cool that I'd share with you all. Olympus 2207. Now, this is a total conversion or modification <laughs> of Fallout 2 using its engine and basic mechanics, but a whole new uh, set of graphics, gameplay features, and a new story in a new world, and it's not related to the Fallout series. It's its own thing, uh, Olympus 2207. And it's, it looks really great. All the reviews are really outstanding for this. So I want to get some more eyes on this, more people playing it. Uh, you can get it 
um, you have to get Fallout 2 first and get that on Steam or GOG, and then they've got instructions here so you can uh, uh, install this thing. It says installer is easy, is easy to use, quick, quick to install, and you don't need additional mods or plugins. It's Olympus 22, Olympus 2207, and I'll have all these links in the show notes. So definitely check all this stuff out. All right, Ooh, man. what about that ale of the week? <laughs> My throat is so dry. Uh, okay, uh, here's the news about that. I remember last time I had some stuff. It was almost ready. It wasn't quite ready. You know, as it turns out, when you're brewing your own beer, trying to carbonate it yourself, it really seems almost kind of random, like how long it takes uh, to get the right amount of carbonation. You know, they say it's usually somewhere between five and ten days. You know, for this, this ale I'm talking about that I want to share with you here, though, it was more like 12, 13 days, you know. Didn't take that long last time. <laughs> Who knows what it is, but it's finally ready. Uh, I did, I've had a glass or two already. Let me just put it, um, not today. <laughs> you know, just to make sure it was the right level of carbonation, basically. Uh, and it is. Uh, so I want to uh, share it with you. And what it is, it's a, uh, it's a recipe called Fresh Squeezins. It's uh, an IPA. And I've had it last time. It's actually the first one I brewed was the same recipe. Uh, but for that, I did two things differently. I had it in bottles instead of in the keg, and also used a dry yeast instead of a, a liquid yeast. Uh, so I changed up all that, and I wanted to see how big a difference it made, whether you use the dry or the liquid yeast. And it doesn't matter if it's in a keg or in the bottle. Uh, so I wanted to play around with a few variables and, and just see what it, you know, see if it made any difference or not. You know, see if I like this, this better or can't tell the difference or, or what. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go uh, to the keg now, pour a glass, or actually fill my uh, drinking horn here. And I'll be right back. All right, so I've got the, the fresh squeezins here. And by the way, I've got, you know, <laughs> I think about four different things going back there. So hopefully uh, I'll be able to do a new one of these next time. I have a German alt beer uh, that I'm working on back there. Uh, what's the name of it? You know, I can't remember the name of that one, just that it's a German alt, whatever that is. But anyway, this is the fresh squeezins. And again, this remember, this is the one that I did using uh, the keg. Uh, so with that, you just use uh, CO2 instead of, uh, you know, the priming sugar and all that jazz. And plus liquid yeast. Uh, so that's what it looks like. And you can see just a beautiful head on that. There's a lot of bubbles. You know, it looks just as good as anything you would order on tap it or, you know, at a brew pub or something. Uh, smells fantastic. Now I think I'll do what I did last time and pour some of it in the drinking horn and then try the, the glass as well to see if there's any discernible difference there. You know, another kind of crazy thing, you know, this is a hobby that you just keep, you know, buying more and more stuff. <laughs> um, but I was kind of curious, you know, what I've been doing when I brew this, it's kind of hard to brew five gallons of water all at once on the stove. I don't even know if that's possible. Uh, so what they have you do is just brew like two and a half gallons and then you dilute it basically at the end of the process. Um, well, not at the very end, but after you make your wort and all that stuff. But basically what I'm saying is it's like you add just some water at one point. Uh, but you can also buy a propane burner and just boil, actually boil five gallons of water and just do it all there, you know, without having to add that water uh, towards a, actually before fermentation. Uh, so I went ahead and bought that set up just to see again. I just want to know, does it make any difference if you boil five gallons of water all at once rather than two and a half and then add, you know, a couple gallons? <laughs> it's just stuff like that. You, you really get into, you get curious, it kind of makes you uh, almost like a mini chemist, uh, if you will. Uh, anyway, let's give this a try. Fresh squeezins, liquid yeast. I think it was, uh, God, what was the name of the yeast? I, I'll get that and put that in the show notes to you, but... <sighs> so good. You know, I'm pretty much sold on the liquid yeast. I've, had, I've used it a few times at this point uh, with some different beers, and I don't, I just think, maybe it's just in my imagination, but I really do think it makes a difference. Uh, you know, it definitely makes, uh, speeds up the, the fermentation process. I mean, with the, the liquids, you pretty much get fermentation going, you know, within hours after you, uh, you know, put it in the wort. Uh, with the dry stuff, I've noticed it could take a while to get going. You know, I don't know. It might not matter much in the long run. But it does cost a little bit more. 
And just like in RPGs, the more something costs, usually, <laughs> the better it is. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, this is fantastic. Uh, I really liked this before. Again, you know, when I had it in the, uh, in the bottle, it was also quite good. Uh, I did run into some troubles, though, with those. You know, some of my bottles, it would just, you know, gush out. You know, obviously didn't do something right with the, uh, with the priming sugar and getting it mixed in properly. Uh, some of the bottles were flat. You know, it's just you never knew what you were going to get. You'd open up a bottle and you just kind of had to hope uh, that it was going to turn out well. Uh, most of them did fairly well, but, you know, I would never, ever go back to that bottling phase. <laughs> what a pain in the butt that is. Uh, to me, the kegs are so much easier and you get a very consistent, uh, you know, product at the end of it. You know, I don't know if much else has changed really other than just the, the consistency of it. Maybe taste a little bit better. You know, I wish I had a bottle of the old stuff here, uh, just so I could compare. But I will say this, I seem to remember with the bottled and you know, the dry yeast, it was a little bit kind of, a little bit drier in the, in the back of the throat. You know, almost like there were some little bits of a uh, hop left in there from the dry hopping. I don't know if I just did a better job filtering it this time or what, but that's completely gone. Instead, it's just a really smooth taste. Uh, a little bit of bitterness there on the back end. You know, it is quite a bit of hops in this recipe. My goodness. <laughs> and so it's very hoppy, but not overpowering. I mean, it's not like something that would, uh, you'd have to dare somebody to drink. And I don't know what, I have no idea what the alcohol content is. It doesn't smell like alcohol. You know, there's no alcoholic fumes or anything. Uh, it just tastes really, really good. You know, I'm just consistently been impressed you know, with my success uh, doing these uh, micro or doing this um, uh, this home brewing, you know, I think if it's something you've kind of been curious about, you might like to try, you should just jump in. It's not nearly as hard as I thought it would be. <laughs> For many, many years, I thought about doing it, but I was always kind of scared off the last minute, like, man, you know, what if I uh, turn out a bad batch or what if I can't you know, what if it turns out badly or I can't make something that tastes as good as what I can buy in the store and so on and so forth. You know, finally I just said, to heck with it, I'm going to try it. And I think it's been, you know, a very successful experiment. And it's, it's kind of fun too. Like I say, there's all these little variables you, you can tweak and you can play with. And, you know, I've, you can try to make your own recipes. I mean, it's just kind of a world of, uh, of possibilities there. You know, so if you really like brew, like drinking brew, and let's just put it this way, if you can... If you can brew tea, <laughs> or maybe that's not quite accurate, but you know, if you if you're the type of person that likes to uh, get whole bean coffee, like you, you grind up your beans, you're kind of fussy, you know, with the percolator or with the French press or whatever. You know, if you like to put in that extra time and effort to make, you know, just that perfect cup of coffee that you know you really love, you know, if that's you. Uh, versus the type of person that's, oh, I'm okay with McDonald's coffee. That's just as good as any other coffee. <laughs> you know, if you're that fussy type, yeah. you know, this is a hobby uh, I think you'd really enjoy. <laughs> There's way more to it than with the coffee. Anyway, let's wrap it up with a quote. And I was looking for quotes, of course, from H.P. Lovecraft, since this game was largely inspired by that. And he's got a lot of good quotes. Uh, this one I've used a couple before, so I found one I haven't used before, I think. It goes something like this. The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear. And the oldest and strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> of course, a quote by H.P. Lovecraft. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that and see you next time.
whole family can learn computing at home. Plays great games, too.